Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss some important examples to understand all the rules that we have studied so far about IUPAC nomenclature. Let's go to the first example. So here we have a structure here, and we can see that the parent chain or the longest chain is nothing but this one, which has eight carbon atoms. Now essentially, there are no, uh, there is no principal functional group or any other functional group, and all we have is alkyl substituents or branches. And the third important thing to remember is how to do the numbering. So we can see that there are two ways of numbering. One is from here, and if you number from this side, the first branching occurs at C2 position. And if you number from this side again, the branching occurs at two position. Now again, we have a confusion because at both the two position, we are having a branching, and uh, according to the previous rule, both of them are getting the lowest number. Now, what should be the preference? So always remember that that carbon will be given higher preference, which has more number of branching. And for the same reason, numbering will be done from this side, and this will be the uh, uh, positions at which the substituents are present. Now let's try to name this particular organic compound. So we have seen that more the branched carbon, the uh, that carbon would be getting the highest priority or the lowest number, and there is no functional groups and there are no double bond or triple bonds such that the hydrocarbon is an alkane. And based on that, you can see that since it is an alkane, the root name n will end with an n. So you have your prefix here which is a substitute uh, which is substituent and along with its position you can see that it will be 2 to 6 6 7 because you have two methyl group at c2 2 at 6 and 1 at 7 2 to 6 6 7 pentamethyl octane why because you have five methyl substituents that will become pentamethyl and from nomenclature we remember that prefix part will constitute your substituent so this will be your substituent 2 to 6 6 7 pentamethyl octane the root name will be an alkane because essentially there are no functional groups here so i hope you have understood this example and let's try an another example here in the next example we have been given a structure like this and we can see that the obviously the longest chain is the uh, hexane or number of carbon atoms will include coh as well and that will be six number of carbon atom is six and the second important thing to remember is what are the functional group or what is the principal functional group. Here we have two functional group. One is C double bond O and one is COOH. We know that COOH has the highest priority based on the priority series of uh, functional groups here. So we can see COOH is here whereas C double bond O is here and this will have the highest priority and therefore numbering will be done from that side. We remember that whenever we have a uh, functional group, uh, numbering is done in such a way that the principal functional group will get the lowest number. So based on that, we now know how to do the numbering and we know at which carbon position or which carbon we have the functional group C double bond O, which will now act as a substituent. So you can see that the name of this particular compound would be 5-oxohexanoic acid. Why? Because 5-oxo will form your prefix which is your substituent. Your main chain or main uh, middle part of the name would be hexane because there are six carbon atoms and what is the functional group that will determine your suffix. The principal functional group is nothing but a carboxylic acid COOH whose suffix will be oic acid. So if you remember we had a table here which essentially summarizes how the functional group changes its name when it becomes a prefix and a suffix. We can see that in our example here C double bond O is acting as a prefix and COOH is acting as your suffix or principal functional group. So based on that you can see that C double bond O here is acting as your 5 oxo and your COOH is essentially acting as your oic acid that is hexanoic acid. I hope you are now clear using the examples that we have dis just discussed how to use the various rules that we have studied in IUPAC nomenclature to name the various straight chain um, um, uh, organic compounds. So please stay tuned to understand how to do the nomenclature for cyclic compounds and benzene substitute compounds.